Hello my friends, welcome to the channel. I hope you've had an awesome day and it's fantastic to see you. Now thank you for subscribing. I really appreciate your support. There's been a whole lot of new subscribers. In fact, more than I ever would have expected. I really didn't expect to be in this position when I started this channel a few months ago. Now the UK and the Netherlands have just called on the US and China to ban gas cars, diesel and petrol cars by 2035. Now, I don't know about the United States, but I know for China, that is probably not really necessary. The fastest growing automotive company in China is BYD. And the key reason they're the fastest growing is because they're selling battery powered vehicles for the same price as ice powered gas, diesel, petrol powered vehicles, right? And customers, well, what do they want when they can have one for the same price? They want the battery one. Well, how do we know this? Well, we know this for a fact. BYD's gas-powered sales have declined enormously. They now sell 88% battery and FEV cars as a proportion of their sales versus around about 50% last year. So what is the key difference? The key difference is the price of their battery-powered vehicles has come down. And it'll continue to come down even more as they bring out their new EVs with their new tech and people will want those. I can tell you right now, there is enormous demand for those vehicles. Now, the Chinese people, believe it or not, they actually love electric cars. And that's one of the key reasons why there are over 400 EV manufacturers in China. When I first went to China, not when it was 15 years ago, there were electric motorbikes everywhere. And I mean everywhere. And I've never seen that anywhere else in the world. Well, electric motorbikes, I'm not talking about electric scooters, I'm talking about electric motorbikes, they were everywhere. Now, the Chinese people, they love reducing smog because smog is a huge problem. If you've been to China, you'll see a lot of people wear masks there every day because they're aware that the smog in their cities is causing health effects to their bodies. And the Chinese government also loves reducing pollution. So I'm not sure that lobbying them is necessary. I think they're aware that their subsidies, the subsidies in China will naturally get rid of petrol and diesel cars by 2030. And of course, so will the declining cost of their cars. I mean, you can buy the Willing Hongwa Mini EV for 4,000 US dollars. Now, before you say it's not a car, it's a quadricycle, no one in China cares about that. They don't care about your stipulations or whether it's a car or a quadricycle. It looks like a car, it drives like a car. So therefore to them, it's a car. It's a, number, it's a reason why it's the number one selling EV in China. Now, remember, just within the last week, Willing Hongwa has had its specs change or they've added a different model. It's longer, has double the range and double the power. 300 kilometers of range, probably 250 in the real world. And the price is the same for this model, 5,000 US dollars. Now, why is the price the same? Well, now it qualifies for a different level of subsidies. And so therefore the price is exactly the same to the consumer. It makes total sense, right? So the Chinese government is subsidizing it at the manufacturing level. They give a thousand US dollars to the manufacturer. That's how they make a profit selling it at this price because they actually only make $24 in profit. That thousand from the Chinese government means they make a profit. Then the Chinese government gives a subsidy to the buyer. So the buyer actually benefits twice. Well, kind of. And who else benefits? Well, the people benefit. Their health is better. The world benefits. The automotive manufacturer benefits because they can sell more cars and then therefore they can start to go sell their cars outside of China and then China benefits. And so China wants to take over the world and how they're gonna do that, they know to do that, they need to make EVs. Do what Japan did in the 70s and the 80s, disrupt everyone else, that's what they're about to do. So UK, Netherlands, good on you for saying this, I appreciate it, it's great, but don't worry, China are gonna do it regardless. The United States on the other hand, no, they're not taking it so seriously and that will be at their peril. Now the British and the Dutch government leaders today called for the United States and China to commit to ban gas and diesel cars by 2035 ahead of COP26 in November in order to meet the Paris Agreement targets. The British and Dutch governments have banned the sale of gas and diesel vehicles from 2030 and hybrids from 2035. Now this is in addition to other countries such as Canada banning them, Europe banning them, and I mean, Euro 7 emissions are basically banning them by 2030 anyway. Now, in an opinion piece in news published today on Zero Emissions Day, UK Transport Secretary Grant Shapps and Dutch State Secretary for Infrastructure and Water Management Stephen Van Weyenberg wrote to governments, Today is an important staging post on the road to COP. It is both Zero Emissions Day 
the Global 24-Hour Moratorium on the Use of Fossil Fuels, and the third virtual meeting in the Zero Emissions Vehicle Transition Council, which represents over 50% of the global car market. We, the governments of the UK and the Netherlands, support the European, Commission, European Commission's proposals being agreed by the Member States and the European Parliament, and ahead of COP26 call on the United States, the EU, China, and the other major markets to join forces in committing to 100% of new cars and vans being zero emissions by 2035 at the latest. The more countries that make this commitment, the faster the investment will shift to EVs and the faster their costs will come down, which is true. The European Commission has submitted a plan for all new registered EU vehicles to be zero emissions by 2035. Schaps and Van Weyenberg also call on automakers to abandon gas cars. They should have written this letter to Toyota and Honda and General Motors and Ford and BMW and, well, where do I stop? Anyway, Fiat, Jaguar, Land Rover, Ford Europe and Volkswagen Europe have all recently committed to selling 100% zero emission vehicles by 2030 to 2035. And we call on all other manufacturers to match the commitment ahead of COP26. This explosion in demand for oil and supply of EVs means that their costs are now predicted by some analysts to reach price parity with conventional vehicles by the early 2020s. Well, it's already happened, guys. I mean, obviously, you're ignoring the Chinese market because, well, what did I just say about BYD? Um, and hey, these other manufacturers, I mean, x just brought out their sedan. And if you look at their sedan they've just brought out, which I'll, I have made a video about, I'll put that in the description below. That sedan is clearly already on price parity with a Toyota Camry. And it's clearly far better. Its technology is better. It's sorry if you if you're making the Toyota Camry, if you're Toyota and you're making that, and then you see this new sedan Xpeng is now making, which is fully battery powered, has a good range, and the price is what twenty four thousand US dollars. And you look at the tech in that thing; it's definitely at a level above what you can get in a Toyota Camry. You have to be really pooing your pants because you're already just so far behind. And there's multiple Chinese automakers. I mean, they, these guys. These Europeans, as I said, Fiat, Jaguar, Land Rover, Ford Europe, and Volkswagen Europe have all recently committed to selling 100% zero emission vehicles by 2030 to 2035. Well, there's already like, I don't know, 400 companies in China that have already only sell EVs, basically. 88% of BYD's cars are battery powered. I mean, Tesla, Chinese companies, and a few other companies in Europe, they're going to basically take, you know, a huge slice of this market. Volkswagen, Tesla, BYD, they're probably going to own, you know, 70% of the market, then the other Chinese companies are probably going to take the other 20%, and then there's 10% left for whoever else wants to take it. I mean, you know, that's speculative numbers. You can take those with a grain of salt, but you see my point here. It's happening no matter what these company countries do, no matter what the United States does. The world is moving to EVs. It's happening by 2030. There's nothing you can do about it, but it's true. The United States, yes, step in, make a difference, make a change. China, well, let's be honest, they're putting massive effort, massive subsidies into not just not just into the cars themselves, but into everything else, into the batteries, into the land that the factories are built on, into the parts, into the semiconductor chips, into the electric motors. There's companies, that are, there's literally thousands of EV companies in China making all the different parts and all the different things. When China sees this information, they must just laugh. I mean, come on, is anyone else, any, is any other country doing this? I'm not a sure for China. I haven't been there in years. And in fact, I, I had very negative views on my experience there because I went to a zoo there. Now, hopefully you people who are saying that I'm a Chinese shill are watching this video. When I went to China, I went to a, I went to a, a zoo and they had this performance there and it was basically animal torture and they beat the animals up basically and the crowd all thought it was hilarious. Uh, I went to, and I saw this happen on numerous occasions. I saw animal brutality. There's things in China that are terrible. Don't get me wrong, but when it comes to EVs, they're leading the market big time. Now, today, Auto Line Daily has reported that BMW and Daimler, Mercedes, are being sued. Environmentalist groups want no more new ICE cars beyond 2030, and not 2035, 2030. Now, as Aurelio says, the sword is falling. Or is that a guillotine whose heads are on the table? Thanks for watching the video. Look forward to seeing you on the next one. Bye-bye.